the show on a serious note, the deadline for RSP contributions is just around the corner. Tax season. We all love it. Don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we talked about it yesterday, but we're going to delve into the RSP with our next guest. We're joined by Andrew Bradley, insurance broker and financial advisor. Andrew, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. One of our Ottawa experts here on Rogers TV yeah, as well. Right. Uh, let's talk, first of all, a, a definition of an RSP. What exactly is it? Uh, RSP were created back about 50 years ago. It's just a way for Canadians to save for retirement. Uh, and basically, it's just, it's not, an, a lot of people think that it's just a, RSP is like an actual physical investment, but it's just a label for the investment for okay. tax reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how much should people be putting away in an RSP? Big question. <laughs> Big question. Uh, I mean, it depends on their budget, how much they can really afford to put away. Uh, there's also limits uh, on what they can contribute. Uh, it's 18% of their annual income. And the limit for 2013, the max can put in there is what, 20, just over 23000 Okay. So there are limits. So it's a significant so, amount of money, though, that you can contribute depending on, of course, your salary scale. Right? That's right. And the, the biggest advantage, too, is that it, any contributions are income tax deductible. So I mean, that's really the big advantage is that you get your income tax deduction, and then the money inside the RSP grows tax deferred. And I think you have examples of that, right? You sent along a couple of slides for us to have a look at. Which are well, you'll explain. Yeah, we, sure. We'll bring them up on screen. I won't speak for Andrew. He'll tell you what they are. So, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a, a scenario uh, where if you have some cash on hand, so mm -hmm. say at the end of the year you have seven thousand dollars swirled away mm -hmm. uh, somehow. Uh, I'll bet. I know that. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> you know I like to swirl things away. Melanie, you can oh. find you know bills tucked in there. In the yeah. couch. Right. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Keep keep going, Andrew. I'm sorry. It's not a tough topic. <laughs> uh, so in this scenario, uh, you have seven thousand dollars in cash, uh, and you want to contribute to your RSP. So yeah. you put it in your RSP at the end of the year, uh, and just assume that a forty percent uh, tax rate, so you get a twenty eight hundred dollar tax refund. So what you can do instead of spending that money on uh, Botox, you can. Uh, <laughs> Your, oh, put that it. back into your RSP, and uh, so you get a full contribution of nine hundred dollars for the year. Okay. Well played. But 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 here's the question though: is that it, sometimes people aren't able to squirrel things away right. during the year. Um, so when the time comes to contribute, mm -hmm. what are the advantages, or should there be thought given to uh, taking the loan out? Yeah, that's always an option too. If you don't have the cash on hand, uh, there is a bit of a risk in, in getting a loan. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, the next picture I have will show one way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the other way is just getting like a loan for, let's say, you have zero dollars on cash. You mm -hmm. want to take like ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then just pay that off over the whatever term, twelve months, twenty-four months. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. The risk of that is, uh, you know, if your investments drop or you know, some kind of interruption in cash flow, you can't pay the loan. Mm -hmm. You default on the loan, and, and it gets kind of that makes it up. yeah. Exactly. You really need to. Okay. Make sure you're all right. Let's bring up uh, that that next uh, photo. We'll have a look at here. Our next slide. Yeah. And so this way, uh, this is another way of doing it. Uh, so let's say again, you have what seven thousand dollars in cash again. Uh, you know, uh, you sell your husband's golf clubs because you forgot Valentine's right. Day or something right. like that. You got some cash sitting around. Uh, you have forty percent tax. Uh, forty percent tax rate. Um, but in this scenario, you calculate how much of a refund you will get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and you kind of find a balance of your refund. So in this case, with seven thousand uh, dollars, you don't get a loan for whatever your refund might be uh, ahead of time. Okay. So in this case, you get the loan for the forty-six uh, mm -hmm. hundred dollars. Contribute that with your seven thousand mm -hmm. at the end of the tax year. That gives you a refund of forty-six sixty-seven. So what you would have, uh, so whatever you might the loan once. Right. And so when you get your tax refund, you pay off the loan. And that way you get a big jump here. So you got eleven hundred bucks up front. Wow, that's a great and idea. And loan is paid off. So. I've never even heard of that scenario. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear it seems to get confused, right, with investments and, and uh, right. saving because there's all sorts of documents. RSPs, GICs, TFSAs. Right. Is yeah. the big difference between a TFSA and an RSP and, and what should people be looking at in that and when comparing those two? Uh yeah, I mean, with the RSP, I mean, the biggest advantage is that you get your tax deduction uh, when you contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the investments grow tax-free or uh, deferred. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the RSP, when you go to withdraw, that's sort of the, the big difference between uh, the RSP and the TFSA is that when you withdraw money, you have to pay back that tax that you owe. 
Right. Uh, exactly. As you have to calculate that as income. Right. So if you're retired and you're on a, and you receive like a pension, if you're a government worker, mm-hmm. you have a pension plus CPP and everything else. Uh, you know, when you're withdrawing from your RSP, that bumps up your your income level, so it may affect uh, benefits uh, that are income tested, stuff like that. So whereas, whereas the TFSA, if you withdraw, there is no penalty. That's right. right. Yeah. TFSA is there's you don't get your income tax deduction, but Everything is, is gross tax free. So, right. and uh, one of the biggest mis- misconceptions with TFSA is, is uh, people just think it's like a savings account. So they, exactly. they're getting you know very low interest rates. That's you know, it. Two you know, percent. Yeah. But you can have you know stocks, bonds, GICs, other kinds of investments in the TFSA. So you can all oh, really. So you can make that TFSA work for you. That's right. an investment. Yeah. Okay. So it's not just simply just as a savings account where you know the bills coming and out. Yeah. Uh, and I'll have another picture here showing sure. showing the difference really between okay. the two. There's a little bit more to it. So All right, let's take a look at that. that. So with your uh, RSPs, uh, you know you get ver- diversified investment options, so you can have your stocks, uh, equities, uh, GICs, cash. Right. Same with TFSA. Uh, with the RSP, again the contribution limit for 2013 is 23,820, and for this year it is. Uh, uh, just over twenty four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the TFSA, the limit is fifty five hundred dollars per year that you can put in. Okay. So the big catch with this is that if you put in over the year your fifty five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. if you pull out say halfway through the year, like in June, you take out a thousand bucks. You have to wait to the year after to re- to put that thousand dollars back. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I had no and idea. that's where a lot of people get caught. They have a saving account, so they take the money in and out, in and out, and then. Uh, at the end of the year, when they file their taxes, they get a they get a, uh, a bill for it going over the contribution limit. So uh, they get a penalty one percent per month you over contribute. So it is carried forward, but into the next year you can't take okay. it in and out. With an RSP, you can take it in and out. Um, but with an RSP, if you do withdraw it, you, there's a withholding tax. So uh, let's say you pull out fifteen thousand, the bank will withhold thirty percent of it at that time. So okay. and then you report it as income. So there is. Tricks and things you need to know about withdrawing your money. Well, that's why people so, need to go and see you exactly, to yeah. get help with things like this. Andrew, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. Okay. Great advice, great tips. Andrew Bradley, ladies and gentlemen, listen, don't go away. Helen Charlotte.